You probably know Lego as the ultimate childhood toy, the one that could turn your living room into a miniature city and a minefield for bare feet. But here's something you might not know. Lego bricks are made from oil. That's right, the same raw material that fuels your car is also the foundation of the world's most beloved building blocks. But here's the twist. While most plastics are thrown away, almost every Lego brick ever made is still around today. In fact, it's estimated that only about 2% of all Lego bricks have ever been discarded. So the question isn't just how these little plastic wonders are made, it's why they last so long and fit together perfectly. Even if one brick was molded in 1960 and another yesterday, today we're going behind the scenes to see how Lego turns oil into joy, one microscopic perfect brick at a time. Chapter 1 Raw Materials From Oil to Brick Let's start at the very beginning, with oil. Yes, Lego bricks begin life deep underground, in crude oil reserves. It sounds strange, but it's actually brilliant engineering. The oil goes through a refining process, producing a chemical compound called ABS, short for acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. But let's be honest, no one's ever going to remember that after this video. ABS is what LEGO calls its golden material. It's strong, colorful, and has just the right balance between flexibility and hardness. Basically, if Goldilocks made plastic, it'd be this one. Why ABS? Because LEGO bricks need to do something very special click together and stay together, but also come apart without breaking. If the plastic is too soft, the bricks won't hold, too hard and they'll snap or warp. ABS nails that balance perfectly. Here's another cool fact. Lego didn't always use ABS. In the 1950s, the earliest Lego bricks were made from cellulose acetate, which tended to warp and discolor over time. By 1963, Lego switched to ABS and they've stuck with it ever since which is why a modern LEGO piece still clicks seamlessly with one made over half a century ago. At LEGO's massive raw material storage facility in Belund, Denmark, ABS arrives in tiny round plastic granules called pellets. They look like colorful grains of rice, and each one is about to become a potential brick. The pellets are stored in giant silos, and we mean giant. The Belund plant alone holds enough ABS pellets to make billions of LEGO pieces. Each color of LEGO starts with these pellets. LEGO uses precise color recipes, measured down to fractions of a gram. In total, there are about 70 standard colors in LEGO's palette, from classic bright red to shades like sand green and earth blue. Fun fact, LEGO doesn't just buy pigments. They make their own master batches in-house to ensure color consistency. A Lego brick made in Denmark will have exactly the same shade as one made in Mexico or China. And before these pellets ever touch a mold, they're dried in special hoppers at around 80 degrees Celsius to remove moisture. Why? Because even a tiny bit of water can create bubbles or imperfections during molding, and Lego's standards don't tolerate that. Speaking of which, let's move to the next step, where the magic really begins. Chapter 2 Production Process Step 1 melting and molding, where the brick is born. Inside LEGO's molding halls, it's a bit like walking into a sci-fi factory. Hundreds of machines hum and click non-stop, running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Each one is a multi-million dollar injection molding machine that transforms those tiny pellets into perfect LEGO bricks. Here's how it works. The pellets are fed into the top of the machine through a funnel, then heated to around 230 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt ABS into a thick, syrupy liquid. This molten plastic is then injected under enormous pressure, around 25 to 150 tons of force, into precision-engineered steel molds. Each mold is a masterpiece on its own, designed with microscopic accuracy. The tolerances are so tight that the difference between two LEGO bricks must not exceed 0.002 millimeters. To put that in perspective, that's smaller than a human hair. Why so precise? Because if the dimensions are off even slightly, the famous click, that satisfying snap when two bricks lock together, won't feel right, and that sound is sacred in LEGO land. When the plastic cools inside the mold, it solidifies almost instantly, about 10 seconds per cycle. The mold then opens, ejecting freshly born LEGO bricks onto a conveyor belt. And no, they don't come out randomly shaped. 
Each mold is dedicated to a specific part. One mold might produce only 2x4 bricks, another handles wheels, and another makes tiny minifigure heads. One interesting secret, LEGO's molds are guarded like treasure. They're so valuable and so precise that only a handful of engineers have access to the design data. Each mold can cost up to $200,000 to make, and LEGO has thousands of them around the world. Isn't that insane? At this stage, the newly minted bricks are warm, shiny, and get this, perfectly identical to every other piece made across all LEGO factories worldwide. Whether you're in Denmark, Hungary, or China, the process is exactly the same. Step 2. Cooling, Collecting, and Sorting As the bricks come out of the molds, they're automatically collected in bins, each labeled and tracked by the machine's computer system. These machines are so smart that they can sort bricks by type, batch, and even color, ensuring zero mix-ups later. From here, the bins are sent through automated systems that move them using robotic arms and conveyors to a cooling area. This is where the plastic stabilizes completely and reaches room temperature. Now, you might think that's it, but LEGO takes it up a notch. Every single batch goes through automated optical scanners to detect even the tiniest defect – a bubble, a scratch, or a color inconsistency. If any flaw is detected, that piece doesn't make it into a set. LEGO destroys defective bricks on site and recycles the material right back into production, so nothing is wasted. Step 3. Printing and Decorating Once the plain bricks are approved, it's time to bring characters and details to life. This is where faces, logos, and designs are added using ultra-precise printing machines. Each LEGO minifigure face, for instance, is printed with ink so fine that it can capture details smaller than a grain of sand. The process uses pad printing, the same method used for decorating electronics or watches, because it allows the ink to wrap perfectly around curved surfaces like heads and helmets. And because LEGO knows fans care deeply about expression, some collectors can identify specific era minifigure faces by their eyebrows. Each batch is inspected by both robots and humans to ensure the print is flawless. Cool fact, the minifigure's smile, that simple two-dot and curved face, was designed in 1978, and LEGO has kept it consistent ever since. Talk about brand loyalty. Step 4. Assembly and Packing Here's where the pieces start coming together, literally. At this stage, the different types of parts from bricks and plates to wheels and minifigure torsos are transported to automated packing lines. Robots measure out the exact number of pieces for each set, down to the last tiny stud. Imagine a factory where conveyor belts carry bins of red bricks one way, yellow bricks another, and robot arms combine them into specific ingredient kits for your LEGO set. That's exactly what happens. If you buy a LEGO car set, for example, each bag inside the box is carefully planned so you can build your model step by step. Those numbered bags aren't random. They're designed to make your experience smoother and reduce the chance of losing pieces along the way. And yes, LEGO has thought of everything. Even the instruction manuals are tested by real kids before a product is released. If a child can't follow a step easily, that page is redesigned. Want to know something interesting? LEGO produces over 60 billion pieces per year. That's roughly 19,000 bricks every second. But with that much plastic in play, you might be wondering, how do they make sure every single one meets the same perfect standard? That's where LEGO's obsession with quality comes in. Chapter 3. Quality Control and the Quest for Perfection If you've ever dumped a box of LEGO bricks onto the floor, probably regretting it a second later, you might have noticed something remarkable. Every single piece fits perfectly. That's not luck. That's precision engineering on a level you usually find in the aerospace industry. LEGO's quality control is so strict, only about 18 out of every million pieces are rejected. That's a defect rate of 0.000018%. Basically, your odds of finding a bad LEGO brick are smaller than your odds of being struck by lightning twice. So how do they pull that off? Every LEGO factory is filled with automated testing labs that check for the tiniest flaws. Bricks are measured by high-resolution laser scanners that can detect deviations smaller than the width of a human hair. Others are subjected to stress tests. They're twisted, squished, and even baked at high temperatures to make sure they don't warp or crack. 
There's even a special test just for the clutch power, which is that satisfying snap when two bricks lock together. Robots repeatedly attach and detach bricks to ensure they click perfectly hundreds of times without losing grip. And if the clutch feels even slightly off, that batch doesn't make it to shelves. LEGO's engineers literally adjust molding temperatures and pressures until the click is just right. The obsession doesn't end there. LEGO runs drop tests, where assembled models are dropped from height to check durability, color consistency checks, and aging tests that simulate decades of sunlight exposure to ensure the colors don't fade. In short, LEGO doesn't just make toys. They make precision instruments disguised as playthings. Here's a cool tidbit. The LEGO group actually has a motto internally. Only the best is good enough. It's printed on the walls of their Danish headquarters. And it's not just a slogan, it's the reason why bricks from the 1970s still fit seamlessly with those made today. Once the bricks pass all these tests, they're approved for packaging and distribution, but LEGO's commitment to perfection doesn't stop at quality. It extends to sustainability, too. Chapter 4. The Green Evolution Here's the surprising part. LEGO, one of the biggest producers of plastic toys in the world, is also one of the most determined companies trying to use less plastic. It sounds contradictory, right? But LEGO's philosophy is all about longevity. The idea is that a brick that lasts for decades, reused by kids, parents, even grandparents, is far more sustainable than a single-use plastic cup. Still, LEGO isn't sitting still. The company has been investing over a billion dollars in sustainability initiatives. Their biggest challenge? Finding an alternative material that's as perfect as ABS. See, LEGO's whole universe relies on that flawless fit, that click, and any change to the material could ruin decades of compatibility. If a new eco brick doesn't lock perfectly with old ones, it's no longer LEGO. In 2018, LEGO made a big breakthrough. They began producing plant-based polyethylene pieces, made from sugarcane, for softer elements like trees, leaves, and bushes. These are chemically identical to traditional plastic but made from renewable sources. By 2030, LEGO aims for all its core products to be made from sustainable materials, while still maintaining that exact LEGO quality standard. The company also recycles everything internally. Every rejected piece, every trimming, every misprint goes back into the system, melted down and reused. Even the dust from production floors is collected and repurposed. Here's a little known fact. LEGO has a program called Replay. It's a recycling initiative that encourages people to donate their old LEGO bricks instead of throwing them away. The company cleans, sorts, and gives them to children's charities and schools. So that brick you played with in the 90s? It could still be sparking creativity somewhere today. LEGO's also redesigning its packaging moving away from plastic bags to paper-based ones, which are easier to recycle. And in 2021, they unveiled a prototype brick made from recycled PET bottles the same material used for water bottles. It took over 250 experiments and several years to get it right. The catch? They're still fine-tuning it to make sure it has that signature LEGO feel. Sustainability isn't an easy path, especially when perfection is your baseline. But LEGO's doing it brick by brick, quite literally. Chapter 5. Packaging and Distribution After all the tests and checks, it's time for the final act turning those perfect bricks into sets that make their way into homes around the world. LEGO packaging process is a symphony of precision. Automated robots weigh and bag specific quantities of parts. Every bag inside the box is calculated so builders can assemble in stages. Those numbered bags aren't random. They're psychological design. They make the experience smoother, more satisfying, and less overwhelming. Each instruction manual is also a work of design psychology. LEGO tests them with kids to ensure the steps are clear, colors are visible, and the flow feels achievable. If a child can't follow a step, that page is redesigned. Once packed, boxes travel through fully automated warehouses. Imagine towering shelves stacked to the ceiling, with robotic cranes whizzing between aisles. LEGO's main distribution centers are in Denmark, the Czech Republic, and the US, ensuring quick delivery to over 130 countries. And here's another cool fact. LEGO's logistics are so optimized that they use real-time weather and holiday data to predict toy demand. That's how they make sure Santa never runs out of LEGO sets during Christmas. From there, the boxes hit retail shelves or your desktop if you order online, ready to unleash a new wave of creativity. 
Chapter 6 Legacy and the Power of Play Let's take a step back, because beyond the plastics, LEGO is something else entirely. It's one of the few toys that transcends generations. Grandparents, parents, and kids can all connect through the same little bricks. There aren't many things in life that stay perfectly compatible for over 60 years. But LEGO managed it. And that's not an accident. LEGO's founder, Ole Kirk Christensen, once said, De beste er ike for God, which means, only the best is good enough. He believed toys should be built to last, not just in durability, but in imagination. Today, the company still lives by that. Whether it's designing a new Star Wars ship, a Harry Potter castle, or a simple red brick, the same philosophy applies. Precision, creativity, and timeless design. Here's something most people don't realize. If you took all the LEGO pieces ever produced and shared them evenly among every person on Earth, each person would have about 80 pieces. That's how widespread these tiny blocks are. And despite being made from oil, LEGO might just be one of the most sustainable toys ever created. Because it never really gets thrown away. Every piece can be reused, rebuilt, and reimagined endlessly. That's what makes LEGO more than a toy. It's a global language of creativity, built one brick at a time. So next time you see a LEGO brick, whether it's under your foot or on your shelf, or in your kid's hands, remember, that tiny piece of plastic has one of the most incredible origin stories ever. It began as oil, it was molded with near microscopic precision, it survived for decades, and it still connects perfectly with every brick that came before it. That's not just good design, that's engineering brilliance disguised as play. And it makes you wonder, what other everyday things have stories this surprising hiding beneath the surface? If you enjoyed this one, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating deep dives into how the world's most familiar things come to life, one incredible process at a time.